Hey lads, welcome to another video and oh, get that monstrosity off of my screen. I'm sorry, when I see that thing, my mind just goes to shit. Alright, so it's a new year. Happy new year, kids. How, how are you finding this year? Is it is it doing you well today? Let me know. Last year we got a new Assassin's Creed game, Assassin's Creed Origins. So this year, 2018, it is time to update our Ranking the Assassin's Creed games video so that it includes Origins. A lot of people have been asking me on streams and things to answer the question where do I rank Origins etc etc as if I could come up with the entire list on the spot. But now I think I've got my list together just in time for the new year. Obviously, before we get into the list, please do bear in mind that this is my opinion. You are entitled to your own. Please don't kill me. I don't don't really want to wind up like the unicorn. But now all that nonsense is out of the way, let's actually get into the list, starting off with our number 10 spot, which is Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Now I get that Assassin's Creed Syndicate was a decent game on its own, but for an Assassin's Creed game it didn't come across with the correct tone. Instead it came across as an utter piss take, and that's not exactly a good thing for someone who's been a fan since the beginning. The game did a lot of things wrong in my books, one of them was try to be very self-aware, and to be honest the result kind of speaks for itself. I'm sure you can put this to better use than I can. Oh, what's this, Greeny? Assassin Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Stop. Beyond that, by the time Syndicate got around, the formula that made Assassin's Creed games at the time was incredibly tired, and Syndicate got the back end of that, so as a result, it wound up right at the very top in the worst spot on the list. If you have a problem with that, please don't kill me. You know what, please hold on to that thought because I know a lot of people are going to get angry at this next one. So you might have guessed it, next we have got Assassin's Creed 3. Assassin's Creed 3 definitely had its fair share of redeeming qualities, such as the opening three sequences with Haytham Kemway and the good modern day storyline, which could have been better but it was fine as is. But it was brought down by the many issues it had. Most notably, the main protagonist, Connor, failed to hit the mark for me because he had the personality of a lobotomized frog. Or for that matter, anything that's lobotomized. Connor's story, in my opinion, was very poorly done and as a result, I couldn't find it in me to enjoy the main focus of the game. Beyond this, the open world was relatively empty with hardly anything to do besides from collect the odd thing here and there and do the odd shallow side mission. And on top of all of this, the ugly blue HUD made the game seem unfinished. The only area that seemed anywhere near the quality of how the entire world should have been was the homestead, which was the hub area if you will. Outside of what was scripted, there really wasn't much happening there. There were of course the homestead missions which make this area seem a lot more complete than the rest of them, but all in all Assassin's Creed 3 really didn't seem complete. Obviously Assassin's Creed 3 made for good testing for Black Flag which came directly after it, but to me it wasn't really anything special by itself. However, I do realise that a lot of people probably watching this video right now really love this game, and from some perspectives I can understand why for sure. And as always I respect any and all opinions, but to me this game just didn't hit the mark. Not as good as William did. <laughs> oh, good joke. Good joke. Right, let's move on. So next up we have got Assassin's Creed Unity. I have no idea where to begin with this one, truly. I guess I could start off by saying that once I get through about 100 essays of ranting there are some redeeming factors. Decent customization, fun side content, the fun feeling of playing online with friends and then there's... yeah. On launch and even today Unity is broken to no end. It's a proper buggy mess, though in fairness it was much worse on launch than it is now, the game was broken so deep in the code, so there's nothing that could have been done to fix most of these bugs besides from build the game up again from more or less the ground up and hope to not make the same errors. A result of them trying this is more than likely Syndicate. Beyond the bugs though there was a good game hiding, under all that muck it was there, waiting to shine and yeah. Unfortunately, the game was never properly polished. Beyond the bugs though, the story was somewhat interesting. That's what I would say. Arno is a good main character. He's not necessarily the best the franchise seen, but he's most certainly not the worst either. The love story really held Arno's character back though, and I feel as if had they approached Arno's story in a different way or had a much better performance on Elise's part, then Arno could have been much better liked. However, I get that love stories can be incredibly hard to execute in games. They might work on television shows or movies, but in a game in which all you really want to do deep down in your epic gamer soul is kill people, they consistently fail to shine. 
As I mentioned before, I did find some enjoyment from the Assassin's Creed Unity co-op, however that enjoyment was rather limited. For the most part, the co-op can be fairly boring, and considering that I play PC and the majority of my friends play console, it is quite hard to find friends to play Assassin's Creed Unity co-op with, so I didn't get the full extent of enjoyment that I perhaps could have got. All in all, Assassin's Creed Unity was a very flawed experience with plenty of potential that just didn't quite make it. On top of all of that, the hype for Unity was unhealthily large for any game, so there really is no surprise that I've ranked it how I have. Moving on, we have Assassin's Creed Rogue. A lot of people would call this game a poor man's Black Flag, and I can 100% get that. The game is very similar to Black Flag and nowhere near as good. But Assassin's Creed Rogue did do one thing no other game in the franchise has really done, and it did it somewhat well. It showed the Templar's perspective, and it's a pretty decent story to follow. Shade Effects from the Assassins becomes a Templar and starts doing Assassin-esque work for the Templars. I rather enjoyed what we got. The story lasted about 6 hours and was ultimately a lot shorter than I would have liked, and outside of the story the open world was very mundane, hardly anything to do, that isn't a shallow side quest that almost feels randomised due to its low quality, or one of the hundreds if not thousands of pointless collectibles dotted around the open world. This stuff brought the game down massively, and ultimately it was very forgettable. It was so forgettable that most people spell its name wrong. But all Rogue was intended to do was to soften that switch from the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, so there were no expectations for this game, so it really didn't leave a sting. And for what it was, I rather enjoyed it. Moving on to our number 6 spot, we have got Assassin's Creed 1. Oh yes, the game that kicked it all off. The first Assassin's Creed game, it goes without saying that it's incredibly nostalgic to play. Even now, I absolutely love going back every now and then and playing it. It kicked the franchise off well, as seen by the fact that it was good enough to warrant a sequel and games afterwards. And for that, I'll always love Assassin's Creed 1. I love the episodic structure to hunting down individual targets through investigations which gave off a small sense of mystery that I loved. However, Assassin's Creed 1 biggest issues were the fact that despite being such a good game, there are other games due to technology and such in the franchise that are just better, and the fact that the game did get very repetitive. All that being said, I'll always cherish Assassin's Creed 1 as the game that started all of this, so it'll always have a place in my heart. Moving on, we have got Assassin's Creed Revelations. Now, I've always seen the quality of the Ezio trilogy as a steady walk down a hill. Revelations was the weakest of the Ezio games for me, but by no means was it bad. Revelations had an incredible main storyline in which we finish off Ezio's story, which was executed beautifully. Beyond this incredible main story, Revelations had its fair share of jaw dropping set pieces and the game's soundtrack was utterly gorgeous. However, beyond all that, the thing that made Revelations the weakest of the Ezio trilogy was its open world. Now, Assassin's Creed at the time never had the most compelling of open worlds going, but Revelations open world was almost immediately quite boring and lacking in variety. This brought the game down a fair bit for me, but all in all, Revelations was a damn good game. Moving into number 4, we have got Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Black Flag was an amazing game. It meshed Assassin's Creed with the pirate stuff in the best way possible. Even if it doesn't feel as Assassin's Creed focused as it perhaps could have been anymore and it might not have been so good. The game shows the progression of Edward Kenway from selfish pirate to wise assassin out to do the right thing as opposed to get rich. On top of this, the naval combat really made this game. I can get a lot of enjoyment from just firing up the game and plundering ships for the hell of it, or collecting resources if I need them. The game's open world does have a fair few pointless collectibles though, that is one thing that might be an issue, but it doesn't try to use them as a substitute for fun content nearly as much as Rogue did. There are side quest lines to follow in which Edward helps out various assassins in their missions across the Caribbean. These are quite fun for sure. The main issue with Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag probably is that most of its land missions consisted of tailing, which is annoying the first time, let alone the 15th. Beyond this though, Black Flag is a really, really good game, so I definitely recommend this game to anybody who hasn't played it. In our number 3 spot, we've got Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Uh, that rhymed and now I feel really weird. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood was a really, really good game. It came straight after Assassin's Creed 2 and continued the story of Ezio, a character most fans at the time loved. The game shows Ezio mature into his role as a master assassin and Mel- I have no idea where that came from. As I was, the game shows Ezio mature into his role as master assassin and mentor as he builds up the Brotherhood in the city of Rome, 
and rise up against the Borgia occupation. The story isn't too long and can be done in about 8 hours if you really put your back into it. Beyond this, there are side missions in which you can help people across Rome by assassinating certain people. There are also side missions in which you can destroy various inventions made by Leonardo da Vinci for Borgia. Beyond this, the Romulus tombs are also fun little set pieces that are worth doing. Then there's the recruit system, where you can recruit oppressed citizens across Rome into the Brotherhood. You can call on them to help you in battle, and you can send them on contracts across Europe. But if you're not careful, these assassins can die, and as a result, you'll have to find a new recruit and train them up as a replacement. And the more areas you liberate in Rome, the more recruits you can have. I really think this system was handled quite well, and I really enjoyed it. All in all, I really liked Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. It was the perfect continuation to Ezio's story. In our number two spot, we have Assassin's Creed Origins, the latest entry to the franchise. A game that actually exceeded my expectations, to be fair, considering that this was after Unity and Syndicate, my expectations did have a bit of skepticism to them, so I was pleasantly surprised by Assassin's Creed Origins. This game is one hell of a comeback, considering the game's taking a year off following the backlash from Unity and Syndicate, Origins reworked the base game entirely, focusing on improving the overall quality of the game, and as a result, we got a beautiful open world filled with deep, compelling side quests, many locations filled with loot worthy of finding, side activities such as the arena or the hippodrome, a good main story to top it all off, and a really nice soundtrack. The game does stray quite far from what we know as Assassin's Creed, and I know it's a lot of people taking issue with that, but the way I see it, Assassin's Creed had to innovate or die, so to me, if anything, this is a good thing. Either way, Assassin's Creed Origins was a huge leap in the right direction for the franchise after the fatigue suffered from Unity and Syndicate. Despite there still being flaws present, such as the repetitive objective of carrying people out of restricted areas, the game is so close to the top spot on this list, because I feel as if this is a breath of fresh air and a step in the right direction and sort of like the beginning of a new era of Assassin's Creed games. I honestly really loved Assassin's Creed Origins and I'm very excited to see Bayek's story continued in the DLCs. And of course, still atop the throne we have Assassin's Creed 2. Assassin's Creed Origins and Brotherhood might have come close but Assassin's Creed 2 is still the best Assassin's Creed game in my opinion. Assassin's Creed 2's story was an incredible journey in which we see Ezio's story from a young man watching his family die along his revenge path to the point where he becomes an assassin, and then a little bit beyond as well. There is plenty of character development and interesting side characters such as Leonardo da Vinci, Bartolomeo, Niccolo Machiavelli and etc. The soundtrack is both fitting for the setting and the game itself. The open world, gameplay and graphics are fairly dated for modern standards, but beyond that the game was amazing, especially the first time around. The feels have become embedded in nostalgia, which has kept it at the top of my list even today. And unless an Assassin's Creed game does it all right in the future, it's likely to stay that way. So that is my updated ranking of the Assassin's Creed games from worst to best for 2018, which includes Assassin's Creed Origins and the nine games that came before it. Obviously, I only included the AAA titles because comparing anything else to the AAA titles wouldn't be fair. Also, like I said at the beginning, this was all in my opinion, so please don't lynch me. Be sure to let me know about your list down in those comments. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I will see you all very soon with another video at some point.